YouTube buzz it going. The Goat House is back just after NFL preseason week one. We're heading into week two. I got my stock report today. Something we'll do throughout preseason in the regular season. I got power rankings every single week. We'll rank teams 32 to one. Give my takeaways for each team every single week. So can't wait for that. In this video, uh, stock report is not based on wins or losses for preseason. Uh, just kind of my thoughts on teams, how I'm feeling on teams, how they're looking heading into the regular season here. Uh, we'll talk about teams with big movement up, big movement down, and I have a bunch of takeaways for a, a pretty long list of teams at the end. So really excited about this. You guys can play along in the comments. We're playing along on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, I have preseason predictions for every single game that will be coming up for week two uh, sometime during this week. We'll do that every week. Uh, a lot of NFL updates on the Twitter as well, keeping you guys involved. So check it out. Link down below. Like and subscribe to the channel. Cannot wait for our full coverage in-season content uh, for the NFL. So join us for all that. Here's our Twitter. Again, keeping you updated on NFL news. Uh, there was just a recent trade. I'll update that. Um, recent trade, small trade here. We got you updated here. Um, again, link down below. Make sure you uh, check it out and give us a follow. Be much appreciated. First team, stock up. I'm going to go Buffalo Bills. This is post week one of preseason, heading into week two. Buffalo Bills, you know, a team that we're already excited about. You know, everyone, maybe if, unless you don't like the Bills, rival team rival fan base whatever it's it's a serious contender here and uh to me stock is up you know it's hard for this good of a team to go stock up but i'm gonna get a little more i'm gonna get a little more excited about this team and i'll tell you why looking at the preseason game uh you don't want to have you don't want to overreact too much from any of this it's just small sample size but two things something on offense something on defense you look at how they ran the ball, you know, early in this game, specifically to their projected starter, Devin Singletary, looked pretty good. Uh, you know, no hesitation, hitting the hole, uh, violent runner still. You know, that that looks great, getting some good yards. Again, I'm not basing things off of stats, how, how big of a run he ripped off. You know, it just looks, looks smooth, looked good. Um, but mainly, not just how effective they ran the ball, but how much they ran the ball, how much they want to run the ball. I like that, you know. In my opinion, last year, they were so close, yet so far. My opinion, AFC Championship game, to me, in, in terms of winning the Super Bowl, they weren't as close as, you know, one game away. In my opinion, that's how I look at it, because um, they, they couldn't run the ball. They weren't effective running the ball. And I don't need you to go out there and run the ball a million times a game, rush for how many yards. I don't need that. I need you to keep defenses on their toes. Make them fear the run game a little bit. That didn't exist. Elite passing game, but was that enough to do it to, you know, because as soon as you get the Super Bowl, it's 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 a whole different game, you know. Um, and you look at the playoffs. They were a little offensively a little underwhelming in the hot entire playoffs. I know they made it to the AFC Championship game, which is great, great progress. Um, but they, they were they were a little underwhelming offensively compared to what we saw in the regular season. Why was that? Because they didn't run the ball enough. They couldn't run the ball effectively enough, but mainly teams did not fear the run. They game plan for only the pass. So you come in this preseason game, and I think you're kind of throwing teams off here with this. Um, you know, our team's going to be like, ah, do we have to respect the run now? Are they going to run the ball a lot more? Is Singletary, you know, progressing? Him and Zach Moss, I know we didn't get to see Moss, but you kind of puts it, programs it in teams' mind when it comes to game plan. So it's a fantastic look here for the Buffalo Bills offensively. Uh, kind of keeps you thinking. So I'm a, I'm a little excited. Again, I don't need them to be a run-first team. I don't need them to run the ball an insane amount of times a game. Just just keep defenses guessing a little bit. You know, this, this could be an elite passing game again. Let's keep it that way, but let's add on top of it. Uh, what I like defensively, what was kind of the problem last year? We kind of, both sides of the ball were looking towards what the problem was last year. Pretty good defense. They got pressure on the quarterback. They didn't actually get the quarterback down, not nearly enough. They had some young pieces. I mean, they added Epinesa last year. He should de develop. They had Russo. They had Basham Jr. It's a good sign how much we're going to get from these guys. I like what I saw specifically early in this game. Russo, Epinesa, guys like that, guys I mentioned. Um, I, I like it. And you specifically look at a guy like Greg Russo from Miami, kind of known as a raw prospect. Why? Because he's, you know, missed a year. Um, he was a receiver coming out of high school too. Um, you needed to put on a lot of size, uh, mixed between, yeah, just weight, muscle. He kind of, he, he looks good. The, the kid looks good. You know, he looks like he did that already. He, um, he looks pretty good rushing the passer too, you know, getting off the line, using his hands a little better. Looks like he's a little more polished, a little more further along than we expected. So 
can these guys be further along than expected? Can the pass rush be further along than expected? You know, they're growing in the really the only areas. Every NFL team has negatives, even the best. Really the only areas where they needed to grow to actually win that, go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, it, small sample size, what's not overreact, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good for the Buffalo Bills. Next up, let's go with the Chicago Bears. It's probably a debatable one, but I do have stock up. Why I say that? Because there are some things that aren't ideal takeaways from them. We'll start with that. They, they're like a lot of guys injured right now. They got quite a few guys injured out. Um, whether it's a major concern for the regular season, or it's kind of uh, yet to be determined. It's obviously not a great thing. They did bring in Jason Peters because their lack of uh, players, healthy players at the tackle position. So, okay, that's better than nothing there. I still think he has some left in the tank. Just got to stay healthy. Um, another thing is that I didn't like, they didn't get a first down until right before halftime. That kind of feels like the last year and the year before Chicago Bears offense. You know, three and out, three and out, three and out. You don't like that. Um, but they did turn it around. And kind of going back to that they were missing guys, it didn't really feel like they were kind of, they were really missing guys out there. That's kind of a good sign. I, I like... Um, you know, that they, they, overall, in general, in this game, they played well. But you look at the specifics, they feel like more of a balanced team than we expected and than we're used to. Uh, you look on defense, they stopped – I mean, this really isn't surprising, but they stopped the run at a high level, they stopped the pass at a high level. That's really not surprising, but it's the same thing on offense. They could run the ball, they could pass the ball. In general, my thoughts on the Chicago Bears heading in the regular season, if they get a little healthier – more of a balanced team. They can kind of hit you from every angle here um, on both sides of the ball. Pty good sign, pretty good sign. What we've been talking about all all off season, you know, with the Justin Fields pick, you know, what the Bears did late last year, they kind of switched their system. Foles comes out, Trubisky comes in at that time. They decided to switch their system, make things easier on the quarterback, run the ball more effectively. More of a West Coast feel offense, play action, roll out, uh, run the ball first, open up the pass. That's what they did. And we kind of, you know, I talked about so much, but I wasn't the only one predicting that. A lot of you out there, a lot of us predicting, kind of had a feeling. They were gonna, they wanted to keep going towards that because it kind of worked. You know, it kind of worked. They draft Justin Fields. Out of all the quarterbacks, the great quarterbacks in the draft, that is the guy that fit that system the most. more Most pro-ready for that system because he ran it at college. It just seemed like a really good fit. Um, you know, and that all of that sounded great when we were talking about it, when we were predicting it. But we had to see it on, in action on the field. We already saw it. Justin Fields comes in. He struggles a little bit early. Nothing to worry about at all. Uh, and then he and then he gets going. And, and and I'm not like you know a lot of people wow by Justin Fields. I'm not really wow. You know he kind of did what we expected. He's very talented. He's very good. Um, but it all went in the in the place perfectly. The Bears system fits Justin Fields. Justin Fields fits that system. It all works together. His legs makes that system even more of a problem for defenses. Makes you respect the run a little more. The quarterback running, it really stretches the field out. Everything went together. And that to me is kind of like, wow, you know, so it looks great. And, and I guess it's a negative. If Andy Dalton still starts week one, unless there's some people out there that kind of want to be safe with Justin Fields. Understandable. Uh, I suppose, um, but I, you know, Fields fits this system so perfectly. He he keeps defense on their toes. It gives them their best chance to win now, in my opinion. Like we've been saying all off season, uh, but like I've been saying all off season, I'm predicting it to be Andy Dalton to start. But I'm kind of backing off that a little bit. You know, it, this looks so beautiful that they may have to go Justin Fields. And overall, I think 99% of you out there that you know, or Bear, Bears fans, maybe that's a good thing. So it's a positive for the Bears. Stock up. Um, don't want to overreact from one, you know, that, uh, that sample size, uh, that small sample size, but it's, yeah, I don't think I'm overreacting. I don't think anybody really should be, we're not, and should be overreacting from Justin Fields specific play. I think it's just everything coming together. This, the fit, I think the fit, which we kind of expected, um, but it, it looks good. We'll see who starts for the bears. A long preseason still not too long, but left to go. Another team, the Broncos, I'm going to go stock, stock up on the Broncos, um, beating up the Vikings this week. Uh, I mean, mainly what I love here, there's multiple things I love. I like what I saw from Drew Locke. They got a quarterback battle. I like what I saw from Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater for, versus former team. I, I like I like what I saw from Drew Locke here. Uh, Drew Locke was a guy I liked out of Missouri, but I start to – It's very, once guys are in the NFL, it's pretty easy to jump off, you know, believing in them because quarterbacks don't really change too, too much. Drew Locke still has kind of had a small sample size, small trial out there. So let's give him more of a shot. Um, and I think he looked pretty good in this game. I think he looked smooth. And I see people saying, 
Well, the Vikings sat all their starters. He didn't play ones. That's true. That's true. And where I want to see him tested more is against pressure, facing more pressure. Well, how will he be under pressure? And I'm talking about not really, uh, you know, I'm talking about actual quarterback pressure, getting after the quarterback. Um, but, I mean, everything I like from Drew Locke, I really had nothing to do with the competition he played in, in this, this past weekend's game. Uh, I think he just looked smooth. I think the footwork looked better. Uh, I think he looked real good. Uh, staying patient. That's a big one. Not just panic and whip the ball. Again, I want to see him against pressure, see if he panics. Something to learn still. It's only been one week preseason. But stayed patient. On time throws. You knew when no knew when there's times to stay patient. There's times not to. He kind of divided it up perfectly. Very accurate on his throws. We knew he had that deep ball, but we see it more and more in action here. It's good to see. He's got a very good deep ball. People forget, you know, he had that the whole way. Um, link it up with KJ Hamler looks good. Uh, that's fantastic. So positive for KJ Hamler. My guy Javante Williams got a few carries early. It looked very dangerous. Looked real good. I think the Broncos, okay, we've seen enough. This guy's legit, you know, so I'm very excited about that. Huge Javante Williams guy. That looked great. Offense line protected well. Again, I want to see him against a little more competition, but it, it, everything looked good. Everything looked good. Bridgewater came in, looked good. You know, it, Bron you feel a little more comfortable with the Broncos, whoever's at quarterback. I think people are, people are talking about that more and more. They, they see it's a legit quarterback competition. It is a legit quarterback competition. I don't think it's as close, though, as other people will say. People will disagree with me. We only seen one preseason game. I actually, I'm, I'm a, I like Bridgewater too, and I actually widened the gap uh, a little more. I got Drew Locke separated himself a little more. I really like what I saw from him. Again, what's, what's sure? Let's see against a little better competition. I want to see if he panics under pressure. Want to see those things. Um, if you know, if he does those things, if he could, uh, you know, pass up everyone's opinion on those things. It looked real smooth though. I, I really like what I saw. Defensively, didn't really have too many takeaways. Patrick Tan looked real good at a pick six. That was beautiful. Um, nothing surprising there, though. But the Broncos, we know. Good defensive, healthy. Offense, talented players. It's all on the quarterback position. Looking pretty positive for the Broncos here. So, can't wait to see more. Uh, team with a stock down here. I'm, I'm going to go the Saints. Again, I'm not basing things at all on if teams won or lost their preseason game because a lot of that factors into that. The, the, the chunk of it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the Saints, you know, going against somewhat of a depleted Ravens team, you think they would perform a little better, but maybe may be a little less sloppy. And the good news is they have time to, you know, clean clean the mess up a little bit. Plenty of time, only preseason week one. But it was very messy, very messy for them. And when I specifically turnovers, fumble, fumble, you know, they're fumbling the ball here and there, and uh, interceptions. Um, you know, and Taysom Mills is the starter. You guys know I've been calling for Jameis Winston. I want Jameis Winston to be the starter uh, for the Saints' sake, and I still, th I still think he will be. But who knows here? But Taysom Hill, um, same problems. You know, you think because you know he's a weapon on offense and he's a good runner, but you would think he'd be more of a running quarterback. He's really not. If you actually watch him, he, he, he you would think he'd be more of the guy drop back. I'm gonna take off. And that's not really a good thing if you're that guy, but where, where Taysom Hill is, you almost kind of wish he was that guy because he's kind of the complete opposite. Holds the ball too long, kind of gets himself stuck in the pocket, kind of gets, gets too far back there, loses some uh, yardage uh, on that. Doesn't know when to be paid, kind of opposite, kind of backwards. Doesn't know when to be patient, when to let go of the ball. He's kind of backwards on those things. He actually has, you know, what he actually has arm talent. You know, he actually has the arm talent. You know, kind of when we first thought, you know, the first thought of Taysom Hill before seeing him last year, we kind of thought the opposite of what he is. Like this guy would be able to run right away. He's probably going to run too much. He's not going to, doesn't, he's not going to have the arm talent. Maybe the arm strength, not overall arm talent. It's really the opposite. It's really the opposite there. So, Maybe, you know, he can kind of get out of that funk. He's still learning. He's still got upside at the position. Uh, but I'm not in love with what I see. It's kind of the same thing from last year. Winston looked pretty solid. Um, you know, nothing, really no takeaways on it. I, I, you know, I thought he looked, I still want him to be the guy. Uh, but very sloppy for the Saints on top of, yeah, they don't have Michael Thomas for a significant time and uh, David Onyemata as well. So on top of all those things kind of growing together here, uh, makes them kind of go drop south a little bit. Sometimes the sloppy turnovers, though, it's not, you know, it kind of, especially if it happens week one preseason, it kind, of, it kind of ends up looking like a fluke type thing. We will see, though. We can't just for sure say, yeah, they're not going to turn the ball over anymore. 
you know, it's a good thing they got out of the way week one. I'll say that. So it's not like major. The Saints are in trouble, but you, you don't really like what you saw here. Uh, and another one, the Dolphins. And we talked about the Bears up. They happen to play each other. <clears throat> and again, not basing it off of the win loss, who won, who lost. But, um, you know, with the Dolphins, something we worried about before we saw them in action, just on paper, you worry about the running game a little bit, you know. And, and good running games can make things easier for quarterbacks, keep defense on their toes. That'll be why. And, yeah, again, makes the quarterback look a little better. So you, for Tua, who I believe in, I believe he can get out of that funk for sure that he was in last year because small sample size, getting thrown in and out, coming off a gruesome injury. It's, there's all legitimate reasons on why he struggled last year. So I definitely believed he can get out of the funk, but it's sure not helping. What, where you're helping is adding the receiver talent, for sure helping. Where you're not helping is the lack of run game. Uh, but let's see it in action. Let's see it in action. And small sample size, don't want to overreact from one game, but it kind of matches what we thought. When you kind of put those together, you do worry a little bit more that the run game is not uh, It's not going to be good. Um, I guess they have depth at running back. Ahmed, I, I actually thought he looked solid. Like if, uh, if I was going to overreact and base things off week one, I'd say he should be running back one. But I'm not going to do that yet. It looked like that, but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, but Malcolm Brown mainly got the load. Were they trying to limit Gaskin perhaps? But Brown was running into contact. Uh, we know he doesn't have this speed. Um, you know, he's a bruiser. You know, he's physical. I think he's a third down back, maybe a goal line back. But, yeah, running into contact, missing holes. Uh, there wasn't a lot of holes, though. Now, we'll get into that. Uh, and then Gaskin was doing the same thing. Even on uh, you know receptions, getting the ball outside, he would have lanes, and he wasn't seeing them. So from both guys, not the best vision. Again, week one, let's get the knock the rust off. That could be it. Um, I just wasn't loving the actual running back play, what they were able to produce running the ball, short yards. They couldn't gain that. Into the blocking, though. The run blocking wasn't wasn't too good. Uh, the pass protection was a little better than expected. Austin Jackson had a really bad rep, rep uh, one rep, so it's not worry too much. But other than that, I thought the pass protection was better than expected. Um, run blocking wasn't too good though. You know, there was constantly guys in the backfield. Some you know even you know against Dolphin starters, some backups against Dolphin starters. Sometimes it was the backup guys for the Dolphins, so that wasn't ideal. So the running game as a whole, again, they got going later. Some of the backup guys I kind of liked in terms of the running backs. Mainly Ahmed, but I think Scarlett uh, was doing a good job just bursting through the hole. Um, but yeah, the running game as a whole doesn't look good. Kind of matches the negative that we that we kind of how we evaluate them, and it makes things harder for Tua. Now on to Tua. Um, early first drive, three and out. He had a kind of a panic play on third down. It's you don't like to see it, but it's 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 the first series of the first preseason game. Uh, and he had some throws that, you know, you see the velocity. You love the velocity on the ball that he zips it in there. He can hit the tight window throws. So that's kind of the positive. Uh, and then, But then he has, uh, you know, that interception in the end zone. Um, now, it kind of brings up a debate. Um, do we do we worry about that? Do we not worry about that? You know, because it's preseason. Does he throw that if it's a regular season game? That's kind of what you question. Does he actually throw that? Does he try that? Gamble on that? Uh, but he does make the bad decision of throwing in the double coverage. And I, you know, to me, interceptions are worse when they're in the end zone or in that area because you're in you're in the area, especially with a good kicker that um, that you get at least three points. At least that should be the worst case scenario. And just, you know, kind of throwing a, making a bad decision, throwing an interception that in that situation. Um, is obviously the worst kind of interception. But I'll bring up the question, does he take that gamble if the game counts? You know, so that brings that up. So there was some some positives, some negatives from Tua's game. Uh, not in love with the running game, you know, at all. There's really no takeaways in the defense. Uh, well, I thought the Bear, the Bears' offensive line was very – we, we kind of view it as a bad offense line, and it was depleted on top of that injury-wise. So I thought we could see more pressure from the Dolphins' defensive front, but – we didn't really see a whole bunch of uh, from the front uh, starters get a whole bunch of reps besides Christian Wilkins. So, uh, who I, well, I thought he looked good, but so it's just kind of a piece here. Do we do we overreact too much from Week One? Probably not, but a piece here the same thing. So it kind of all comes together, which I have that they're stocked down a little bit. It's a team I had in my early offseason predictions. Again, my final predictions will be out before the season, but it's a team I had sneaking into the playoffs. You know, so, so some things I don't love, you know, right at this early stage. Uh, and a lot more takeaways here. We'll go through these. The Jets, um, the first stock report video that I did was just based off, you know, early, early training camp. I had the Jets stock up. 
thought they could be a sneaky team. Wilson was looking really good early in camp, but then right after that video, we see the you know, good chunk of camp. Wilson struggling a little bit, specifically under pressure. Um, and then the Jets saying things, you know, things are going to get worse before they get better. It's not, you don't like to hear that. Not good. So I was almost trending towards the Jets kind of moving back down and kind of being neutral. But then it comes to the game, and I thought they looked pretty, you know, nothing, you know, wow or great. Uh, but definitely nothing bad. They looked pretty overall positive. They looked pretty smooth, uh, specifically Zach Wilson in that game. Um, you know, so that kind of negative and positive there. So that's good. Uh, Cowboys, you know, you worry about D Dak's injury was almost mysterious. Uh, baseball injury, you worry about that a little bit. Uh, but it sounded like, you know, some positive news news coming out of there. So kind of small takeaway there. It's looking like it's okay. The Giants, you know, all these NFL teams threw out some bad offensive lines out there, and they struggled because they were they were bad off, and they were second-string, third-string offensive lines. The Giants threw out, threw out their starters minus one guy, and it looked pretty bad, you know, kind of the same problem as last year. That's kind of what I – criticized the front office on this past year you know they're they're kind of being afraid to get better in that category they're relying too much on young development just go out and get better so uh pretty much everybody you know on that starting offense line small size small, small sample size but struggle a little bit it's obviously not ideal you know if the backups were out there and they struggle we wouldn't be talking about this Steelers, do you remember the Steelers traded for Joe Schobert? That happened. Remember, this is just not based off preseason game. We're talking about what just happened in the last week. Uh, they added Joe Schobert uh, from the Jags, formerly on the Cleveland Browns as well. They'll put him in there um, next to Devin Bush, inside linebacker position. Uh, they want Bush to blitz more, and they want Schobert to cover more. So they want it's more of a cover linebacker. So complement each other pretty well. Overall, they get better. It's not a piece that's like, okay, now they're going to go into Super Bowl. It's not, it's not at all like that. You know, um, They still would have been a good defense without him, so it's, I don't want to overreact from this one either, but they get better at the end of the day. Uh, Bengals, this defense could be sneaky. We've been talking about you know, the offense has struggled in camp, you know, but it's mainly because the defense has been looking pretty good, and Bur Burrow struggling a little bit, offense line struggling a little bit, but the defense has been looking pretty good. And we see them in action. Action, they got a lot of um, – they got a lot of young guys fighting for spots, and we see that out there, whether they're ones or twos. Look pretty good. You know, look look pretty good. We see Osai get after Tom Brady. Uh, Hendrickson's getting some pressure. So, I, you know, I think the the young talent, which kind of fits today's NFL, the younger guys are thriving a little more uh, because there's some offenses out there kind of gearing towards, you know, more a college-style offense. That's probably why. And athleticism kills even more in today's NFL. Um, you know, they're on the right track. You know, they're on the right path. They could be a sneaky defense. It's not going to be a lights-out defense. They could be a little sneaky. Uh, the Vikings, yeah, like, set all their starters, so you don't want to take away too much from the Vikings, you know, based for a regular season thing. But uh, the depth looked pretty bad. You know, those guys, you wish they would play a little better. There was, it was a lot. It was messy. It was messy out there. And play calling was a question mark. You know, were they calling plays different because who was in there? Possibly. Uh, but I was not a fan of the play calling. It didn't look like the head coach Mike Zimmer was either yelling at the new offense coordinator, Clint Kubiak. So that's not ideal there. You know, I had them stocked down last week for a group of things. You know, do we put them down even further because of these? These are more question marks. So no, but eh, kind of getting towards that. So stock has been going down for the Vikings for me. Uh, Texans opposite depth looks pretty damn strong. And we kind of should have known that. We kind of did know that because – They've added so many guys in free agency, and in terms of big-time players in starting spots, they're kind of lacking, and that's why people are predicting the Texans to be on the lower end of things. But they got a load of guys, solid guys that can play that have experience at pretty much every position, so that results in having pretty damn good depth, and we kind of saw that. You know, I thought we would see the starters a little more. I think well, Tyrod Taylor was 100%. That's good. Mills threw a pick, but other than that, I thought was okay. Um Again, I thought we'd, we'd see a, a longer list of starters more. But I guess we don't know who the starters are because the depth is so good that the threes are just as good as the ones. So it's not a it's, – it's, that's pretty solid, I suppose. So they look pretty good against a Packer, good Packers team. Uh, Jags kind of got a negative and a positive here. Offensive line worries me a little bit. I mean, the very first play of the game, Trevor Lawrence is sacked, uh, and they were really getting pressure on him the rest of the game. And then they sacked him again. They were getting, getting some good pressure uh, the Browns defensive line that was, and it, and it was, you look at it, it was really just because of poor, poor blocking attempts. Um, so that offensive line worries me a little bit. They, maybe they, it's a team that looks better than they actually are on paper, you know? Um, so that, that's a little scary. 
Uh, Marvin Jones looked good. You know, kind of brings up the takeaway. Uh, is he receiver one? You know, kind of a fantasy takeaway. You know, is this guy because Lawrence kept looking at him. He trusted him even when he was tight coverage. You know, Lawrence loves those sideline throws. He's so good at throwing the sideline. Loves Marvin Jones there. Again, trusts him to go up and catch the ball too. So basically, you know, a guy that can dominate uh, Lawrence's game, which is a sideline, and also can be trusted by the quarterback on jump balls is the same guy. You know, that, that guy is the strongest in those categories uh, across the board. DJ Chark's pretty good down the sideline. That's deep, more deep down the sideline. So Marvin Jones feels like it's a huge Trevor Lawrence guy. That's kind of what it feels like there. Eagles, Hurts needs more reps. I was shocked. It's only one game. I was shocked that he came out that early and Joe Flacco looked pretty decent. You know, people say Flacco going to start. Uh, you know, he's not going to start. Um, you know, but Hurts needs more reps. You know, his – talking about on Twitter a little bit. I've been talking about it for some time too that uh, Hurts was actually a little better than, and more impressive than expected last year, but he really needs to work on his game versus pressure. Um, you don't want to – you don't want to read pressure. You want to feel pressure. He's locked into the pressure too much and not locked on into his the coverages downfield, but his teammates, there's receivers, um, and kind of handling pressure after that reading part, feeling part, needs to be a little better. Um, maybe pocket presence could be a little better as well. Those things you just only get better in live action. So I, I, I mean, you know, it's only one game. They're probably going to get him going more. In week two, I hope, uh, because that, that needs to happen. Because Hurts could be good. It could be very good. Panthers, as I expected, loaded at receiver. Remember, I ranked every receiver core, receiving core, you know, combining uh, starting receivers, starting tight ends, but the depth of those positions. And I ranked the Panthers, it was, it was bold. I ranked the Panthers easily inside the top ten. You know, nobody else ranking them there. A little bold of me, I thought at least. Uh, and it was kind of on display here in this game because, uh, DJ Moore's out, Robbie Anderson's out, a guy like Terrace Marshall, who was a pretty good draft pick, is out there tearing it up, and you see other guys, you know, Shai Smith, a good pick, David Moore's out there, the tight ends are getting going, even guys that really aren't supposed to be, supposed to be receiving threats like Tommy Tremble, etc., um, but yeah, Terrace Marshall looked good, it's a guy that you can line up everywhere, remember I talked about him, people kind of had the wrong idea on him, because he's a 6'3", uh, maybe a shy, hair shorter, um, people just thought he was an outside guy, you know, and they see he had a bunch of touchdowns. He's a red zone jump ball guy. He's not that guy at all. He, he's not that guy, you know, he's, um, he plays in the slot a ton. You can line him up everywhere. You can run almost every route. So that's a good sign. They're just loaded at the receiver. I shouldn't have put WR, the graphics guy shouldn't have put WR there. Just receiving t targets in general. That's good. PJ Walker looked good. Is that spark PJ Walker versus Sam Darnold? And I think Sam Darnold's locked in as, as quarterback one, but they have a pretty good backup option. He looked good. I think it should be. I haven't been a huge Darnold guy. You know, he's got to prove me wrong. So I think it should be more of a quarterback competition. Maybe a negative uh, here uh, I'll give you for the Panthers. Sam Darnold should have played. This guy needs more reps. He needs to grow a lot more. We better see a load of him in week two, kind of like the Hurts situation. I didn't. That's kind of a negative here. I didn't. I, we needed to see him more. Titans defense on the right path, I think. You know, defense was pretty pretty poor last year. Uh, for a number, mainly because they couldn't get pressure on the quarterback and in the corners, it made the corners job harder, but th their alignments were off. Uh, it just felt like the scheme was off. Everything was off. I think it started with not being able to get pressure. It threw, it, they weren't able to run the defense they wanted to run. They add pressure guys, guys that get pressure, um, pass rushers in general. This offseason, that's kind of the positive, something we, we it's not really a fact yet, though. Did, did, did. They actually get better there. So that's what we're still waiting to see. But the defense in general, the way it was called, the scheme, um, alignments, all that in general kind of came together, and it looked more like a defense, you know, unlike last year. So really alignments of players, corners, you know, aligning the right way. And they were able to get some pressure, so some depth guys getting pressure. Um, you know, so there's just good signs. You know, no, nothing firm yet, but I think it's a good sign. It just looked like a mess in general last year. Colts, um, yeah, left tackle seemed to be a problem. Who they were rotating in, the guys battling, uh, were getting beat a bit. Um, you know, Costanzo retires obviously, and then with him, without him last year, I talked about pretty big difference. People didn't realize, um, so that is a problem. But I do put for now because when Eric Fisher's, he's very good left tackle. You know, Eric Eric Fisher's back there in business, but left tackle for now. Um, yeah, it, it seems to be a problem. You know, is Carson Wentz going to be back there? Is he going to be fully healthy with somebody coming off the edge over there coming after him? So you kind of worry about those things. Another takeaway from the Colts, um, yeah, 
Eason, I thought throwing the ball looked pretty pretty solid. You do worry. Same like is the prospect evaluation on him. He was pretty poor against pressure, facing pressure, lack of mobility, um, knowing when staying too patient, knowing when not knowing when to get the ball out, but a credible arm talent. We saw that on display. All of that, the positives, arm talent, uh, and then how he is under pressure. So when the offensive line's healthy, um, com- more complete like it it is when it's healthy. Uh, it's a very good offensive line. Uh, Eason could play, you know, if they need him to. I think he can play. You know, you just, he's, I think he's a guy that you needed know, the offensive line needs to be there. Ellinger came in, he threw a pretty bad pick, but then he uh, kind of dug himself out of the hole and they end up clutching up and win the game. So that was good. So for both, you know, a little some negatives, positives there. Patriots, very small sample size, but I'm, it just, it's, it's not me coming up with something based off the small sample size. It's something I've been saying, but I'm kind of, it's kind of a con- confirming factor uh, in there for me heading that direction. Mac Jones has to be the guy. I, it brings, gives the offense more. Gives the offense more than Cam Newton, in my opinion. He looks solid. Basically, what I'm getting at uh, at the end of the day, he looked pretty solid. He's a guy that you know I liked more once he went to the Patriots because it was kind of the perfect system. His awareness is so good. Um, he goes through his progression so well. Uh, you know, people, he was hitting checkdowns a lot. Um, and you do worry about if he's just, you know, I want to go, I'm scared to do this. I'm going to go to the check down. That's not what the case was. He was actually going through progressions, realized the check down was the best option on those plays. We seen him take the shots. There was a couple of drop balls. One would have been a touchdown. There was another one in there. Um, you could see even with the better receivers, he'd be even better. I really like what I saw, uh, from Matt, from Mac Jones there. I think from the rookie quarterbacks, I think, uh, who impressed me in terms of their, their talent. Uh, what they could do probably be Mac Jones probably number one uh, the bigger picture though you know Justin Fields fits uh, that Bears offense so well what they're trying to do it makes the Bears that much more dangerous so that side of it you know Justin Fields went out there and did what I what I knew he can do obviously so um, kind of can argue both there uh, for those reasons uh, you know other, I didn't really have any takeaways on the 49ers people kind of looking for that Trey Lance had a couple good moments you know some moments where he needs to kind of relax calm down a little more stay more you know more patient um, so I didn't really have any takeaways there. It's just, you know, it's, it's what it was, what we expected, what it is. Um, you know, so those are my takeaways from week one, heading into week two stock up and down. We'll be back with the same thing right after the games. Uh, this next week, we'll have you covered on our Twitter, talking about the games, uh, more games nationally televised this week too. So that'll help us out a ton. Uh, so make sure you follow that Twitter. I'll have my week two, every game prediction, uh, coming uh, of course, before the games this week on there. So check it out. Link down below. Please like, subscribe. Full NFL coverage when the season starts. Uh, full NFL coverage at, uh, at all times in the year. But can't wait for the in-season content. So join us. It's going to do it, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.